We transformed an Elder Guardian into a Cyborg, and this pet owl is actually a grindstone, and these are 37 Minecraft build hacks. And hey, the analytics gods bet me that no one can subscribe to the channel before I hit the ground, but I know that you can, so to prove them wrong, fall to that sub button below. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Here's how to make a working cyborg in Minecraft. Because if we tuck an Elder Guardian in a place like this, its AI is just smart enough to follow you around with its eye, giving us the perfect amount of creepiness for this working robot. Overall, making this Elder Guardian feel a lot more like one of the Guardians from Zelda. This is a bed for me, and this is a bed for my son. Or it sure looks like that. Because by using some sneaky armor stands like this, we can shrink down our regular items to a much more manageable size. And with just that, we'll have ourselves a child-sized bed and a child-sized chest to keep all their items. Just don't try to open it up, then the illusion will fall apart. If you can't see the lights here, that's kind of the point. Since if we place these carpet layers in such a way on top of strings, then we can use that to hide the lighting from the top. And there you go, the light gray carpet matches the stone texture pretty well, and that way you don't have to see a distracting block of glowstone that takes away from the rest of your build. So if you're looking for a subtle way to keep monsters from spawning, I'd say this technique's worth a try. Here's how to make your fire even hotter, or at least look like it is. Since while you could just do a fireplace with a regular fire source like this, by tucking magma blocks behind it, those will look like hot coals that are inside of the furnace. And that's one of those little details that when you put it into your build, it really proves you went the extra mile. And I think that's worth it. We added a vertical slab to Minecraft. Well, kind of. Because funnily enough, if you just place two trap doors facing into each other and then flip them up, then it certainly looks like we've got ourselves a vertical slab here. And especially when you use something like the spruce trap door, the texture blends together perfectly and makes it look like an actual feature in the game. Which I guess it is, but just not in the way that Mojang intended. It. And considering that they denied putting this feature in the game, this is really the closest we're gonna get. This is a melon, and this is a rotten melon. Or, it looks like that. Because by mixing together mud with our mangrove roots, we get the perfect block to look like a rotten melon. And then, if we take after this user and use a wither rose here instead, then that'll also look like the decayed stem from the original melon plant. Which could be a perfect way to add some new world building to your new farm. Or to play prank on your friend, whichever one happens first. If we fill in the gaps of our wall with the brick wall block, then those brick walls make it look as if the wall got damaged and the facade starting to fade off. Which I think is a great touch. Not only does it add literal depth to the build, but it also adds depth in that it tells more of a story with it. Which is a lot to accomplish for just a couple of bricks on a wall, so I think this is a pretty good deal. This build act is a violation of the Geneva Convention. And now that I got your attention, let's talk about how we built it. Because luckily, what's actually happening here isn't as cool as it seems. But by tucking a villager into place in a cauldron and then using a dinner bone name tag, we can flip it upside down, but because it's a cauldron, Aldrin, it's not gonna drown inside that block. Not to mention the fact that that's not how the Dinnerbone name tag works anyway. And then with a couple of chains on top to keep it in place, we make it look as if it's hanging inside the pot. Even though, luckily, the villager's a paid actor and no one was harmed in the process. Here's how to turn your pistons from this into this. And the secret behind this isn't doing something like McMakestein's mod, even though that is cool, but instead, by just using the set block command with different parts of the piston, we can separate the head from the body and then place fence post lining in the middle. And there you have it. A giant piston. And if you really wanted to, you could even make this into the sticky variant as well. Just don't expect it to retract anything. There's no off switch for this one. Instead of using stone or andesite for your build, use both together. And what I mean by that is that if you were to add in patches of stone within your andesite floor like this, it'll create the illusion of broken floor tiles. And then it just looks like the concrete underneath is getting exposed. Which I think is a good way to mix together these two blocks. Especially considering you're gonna get a lot of both on your next mining trip. Might as well put it to use. If you've got plenty of banners, then you have just what you need to make a couple of these ghosts that were designed by Gold Robin. And I love the little detail of having different facial expressions for each of the ghosts. And really, whether you use glass blocks to support these in the sky, or light sources so that they glow in the night, this build trick is just what you need to turn your house into a haunted one. And you do it all without needing a creepypasta. You might have seen this build recreating the entire universe in Minecraft, but here's how to do it yourself. Since with the help of glowing invisible item frames, we can mix together nether stars and skulk veins to have ourselves our very own piece of the cosmos right up in our ceiling. And then, with magma blocks and frog lights for the sun, the whole thing really starts to come together, especially if you use something like shaders. This build hack is expensive, but it's worth trying, since while it's more common to do paths over dirt, by using iron ore and raw iron blocks like so, we could do the same over our stone. And following this example, it can really start to look like something special. Just make sure that none of your greedy friends come by with a pickaxe. You're really giving up the goods here. You're gonna have to zoom in to see this one, but that's kind of the point, since by tucking a button inside an invisible item frame like this, we get the perfect amount of 
texture and detail to make ourselves beetles crawling on your oak log. And while they're admittedly a lot smaller than spiders and bees that we already see in the game, let's be honest, I feel like this looks more realistic anyway. And if you built one of these with a glowing item frame, then you might just have a firefly on one of these logs as well, which is nice because they're not in the game otherwise. Getting mobs to cooperate for your builds is not an easy concept, but with the help of a cleverly placed stone brick wall here, then we can set up our display in such a way that when we push in our glass blocks using a piston, then even a mob as dangerous as a creeper will be kept in place. Granted, it will be stuck trying to bounce up and down to get over that fence, but that's a small price to pay when the alternative is it exploding and the whole build goes up in smoke. I'd much prefer this one. Campfires are great for smoke, but they don't offer a lot of that. So, enter the dead coral. By using these spaced out like so, we can make some pretty convincing clouds of smoke. And I think they look a lot more like smoke than the kind of cobwebs that we're used to. And better yet, you can even mix together the different kinds of coral to have different gradients to the smoke cloud. There's so much to do here, it's really just up to you to experiment with it. But if you're looking to take your chimney up to the next level, I think you'd be hard pressed to find something that works better than this. As Iron Pixel shows off, the red color of the mangrove wood lends perfectly to building yourself an airplane. And this example more than proves that. And then with some grindstones for the landing gear underneath, we have just what we need to put ourselves a mine cart up top and ride around in our newfound biplane. Though ride around is a funny way of saying it, really it's just riding in place. But as the original time lapse shows, even that looks pretty convincing after a while, especially when the clouds move in the background. Chandeliers are great, but expensive. But with the help of glow berries, we can do it for a lot cheaper, all without sacrificing the look inside. With a couple of these cave vines, we can hang them off our roof and then clip the ends so that they stay just right where we want them. And there you go, a chandelier for a light source, and we did it all without having to break the bank. I'd say both of those count for a win. Minecraft has glass bottles, but not like these ones. Though with the help of an armor stand, we're able to position our telescopes just right and make it look like we got spy glass bottles instead. And I think these would work perfect for a new bar, especially because when we use armor stands, we're able to position them on different steps of the stair like this, making it look more like a shelf than anything else. And I think that's perfect. We can wait for this build hack to load in, but the truth is, it never will, because that's the whole point. And by mixing together an invisible item frame with a goat horn like this, we can use a command block that constantly updates it so that it rotates and creates this loading screen animation that we see here, which can be great for making your friends think they have a bad internet connection, or it might just be useful to have for the next time you set up a new map and you need something for the players to see while you get everything ready. And really, so few of the Minecraft textures are animated, so it's nice to see us make do where we can. This is a pumpkin, this is a jack-o-lantern, Lantern, and this is my jack-o-lantern nether portal, which taken after this user's post, we could take advantage of different orange colored blocks such as acacia and red sandstone to really detail our supersized squash. And then with a couple of drip stones for the teeth, I think this gets appropriately terrifying to house your next nether portal. I mean, it certainly looks a lot better than just putting a nether portal in the middle of a field, that's for sure. Here's how to build the wither without actually building the wither. Since if we take after this user and mix together the right number of stairs and slabs, then we can carve out this perfect wither shape into your next wall. And then for an added bit of detail, mixing in something like chiseled nether brick, which has the wither skull texture in it, could work perfectly for the heads behind the wall. I mean, that's too good to pass up on. And it's a lot less destructive than the real thing. Instead of placing your food in an item frame, place it on a rack. Or rather, place it on an invisible item frame on top of that rack. Which in turn gets us this really cool effect of drying out our fish after we caught them. Which is a bit of extra effort, but it looks a lot better than just placing them inside of the barrel after you catch them. So I'd say it's a trade-off. If you look closely, you'll notice that some Minecraft textures you don't expect to work together do it just perfectly. And such is the case when you put the target block next to the quartz pillar texture, since they both have these evenly spaced lines that blend together nicely. And that could give you some cool opportunities to use these for. Not just for a target range, but maybe it's a way to mark a pillar for a secret as well. Or maybe it's graffiti. The choice is up to you. With the help of custom player heads, we have just what we need to make ourselves a replica of the Mars rover. And by using one of them as a camera up top, this really does sell the illusion. And I think if you were to tuck one of these inside your next mesa biome, that might be all you need to turn that red desert into the red planet, which is a lot cheaper than spending billions on a rocket to try and get there, trust me. By taking brick stairs and alternating them in a pattern like so, we have it in just a way where it looks like there's a brick missing from each of these steps, and I think that's just perfect. And not only is this a little funny thing to put in your world, but when mixed into a wall like this example, it actually adds some convincing depth, and when you zoom out, it might even leave some people wondering how you actually built it, which I think is true of all the great build hacks. This tank might not be intimidating, but it sure is cool. And we built it all in vanilla. Since by mixing together anvils for the wheels and trapdoors for the supports, we then have all we need to tuck a boat on top and a lightning rod at the front and make this into the perfect mini tank replica. Just don't expect to go anywhere very fast in it. Stop using item frames and instead use these sides. Since unlike those item frames, 
these aren't gonna lag out your game nearly as much. And by using different kinds of ASCII art like this user does here, it can still be quite effective. And plus, you'll still have room to type out the actual label in case people can't decipher your abstract art. And for my money, I'd say this is a lot more creative than just putting a leather in between some sticks and doing it that way. And better yet, you could even dye the sign, offering up more variety than you maybe expected. In bedrock condition, trees are known to fall over, but in Java, not so much. So, I guess that's our job. But we don't have to be boring about it, and by help of using the wood blocks instead of the logs, we can build ourselves a custom tree like this that seems to have toppled over in the forest, which I think is a great detail to have, especially if you have some kind of lumberjack shack nearby. Oh, and for the cherry on top, place a bee nest off to the side here, then it really looks like one toppled over. Here's how you should use your grindstone in an enchantment room, since placing it like this is boring. But if we add this in, then it's not a grindstone, but instead a pet owl, which fits a lot more with the magical aesthetic of the room anyway. So if you're playing on a server with the player head data pack installed, take this as your sign to build yourself a headwig. It certainly looks better than the alternative. With a mix of carpet and wool blocks, we can lay out the perfect rug to have ourselves a picnic. And then by using pressure plates for the, well, plates, we can really make this look as if it's lived in. And for my money, the best part of this whole facade is using an invisible item frame to add in a little shovel for a spoon. Well, that's just perfect. Here's how to make your bamboo farm look 10 times better. Since with the help of the debug stick, we can add in these different leaves to your bamboo stalks and essentially make them into a whole new plant. And then by adding in fences on the side and iron chains above, we've got ourselves a new farm to put on display. And honestly, with how fast bamboo grows anyway, it might be nice to have the chains so that the rest of it doesn't get messed up as soon as they grow. Normally we do our cooking in a furnace, but how about a pot? Since, as we'll see here, by just putting a cauldron full of water on top of a campfire, the smoke's still able to pass through the top. And then with a couple of fence gates pointing into it and some armor stands locked into place like so, this looks like the perfect place to cook up your meal. And what's even better about it is that we can still interact with the campfire underneath. So if you really wanted to, just place down your meat and you'll still get the food cooked all the same, just with a lot more visual splendor. With just a tripwire hook and some trap doors, we can add a convincing tree tap to your tapped trees. And from that point, it's up to you to choose what kind of sap you're collecting from the tree. Whether that's using a honey block next to a birch tree for tree sap, or a redstone block with a crimson tree to look a bit more sinister. And for such a simple idea to pull off, this really is creative, and it won't take up much space either. So if you can't go through all the effort to build a custom tree, at least you can make a bone meal tree look a bit more custom with one of these. You probably don't think about using levers for building, but after seeing this, you'll reconsider. Since just two levers and a cobblestone wall, we can get a nice piece of detail for your next wall. And really, as this example shows, you could tuck a whole bunch of things inside the middle of these two levers and have it look pretty cool. And personally, I'd like to take after this comment on the post and make one of these with an amethyst crystal. That would be particularly cool to see. And plus, it would serve as a light source. In the nether, you'll find warp trees, and now the dead warp tree. And the way that we made this is by mixing together muddy mangrove roots for the stem, and then dead coral blocks for the leaves above. And while that's cool enough, I love the idea of putting hanging roots underneath the blocks to look like dead warped vines. And really, this just makes me want to see a whole dead forest made out of these. They look that good. These are the rarest blocks to build with in Minecraft, because you can't build with them. But if we take after this user, we might just have a way to incorporate the sun and moon into our designs. And for me personally, I love the creativity here. And the fact that these only show up on the build for a limited amount of time, I think makes it even more special, making it more of a light show than a static statue. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right.